All right, um, I'll give you my thoughts about Dave Bautista, uh, who is a WWE, former WWE superstar, who is right now um, a Hollywood uh, actor, successful actor. He is doing pretty well for himself and he is coming out with all these movies. Okay, uh, what I want to specifically speak about is the very fact that once upon a time he was at least 300 pounds. Uh, 300 pounds is, I think, roughly... Um, Right, pounds to kg. It's not exactly uh, divided by two. So he was around 300, 300 pounds, which is 136 kilograms. And now he is um, 256, I think, 116. Okay, I think he's 116. So how come a guy like him who was like uh, 300 pounds, how did he bring and why did he bring himself down to that level? Okay, so uh, let me just go to the Wikipedia page with Dave Batista. Okay, see now Dave Batista right now he is 55 years old. He is no longer a young boy or a young buck. Okay, he is 55. And when you reach that kind of age, uh, your testosterone obviously starts to decline. And remember this much, these guys will never admit the fact that they take steroids. Um, and steroids is not just for big muscles. Steroids is for healing your body. There is steroids for helping you be more athletic. There is There are steroids for, uh, you know, being sharp. So the steroids are different, different. Um, um, they have a different kind of an impact. Okay. So now Dave Batista, he obviously has been taking steroids. He's not going to talk about it because if you, you know, there's a lot of negative connotation with steroids. People, when they hear about steroids, they think you are a bad person or they think you're evil or they think you're a drug addict. Okay, so there is a very bad taboo, especially for the uneducated mind. In fact, I find it so funny. Some of the movies that I see, one of the movies, uh, I can't get the name. They showed this guy, fighter is taking steroids. It is uh, Broga or something, the fighting guy, Broga. You know how they show him taking steroids? It's kind of funny. They show him putting some liquid in a syringe, colorful, <laughs> which was funny. And then he's bringing it here. Ah, 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 and when he puts, he's like vibrating and shaking and suddenly veins are popping out. It's like uh, watching a Marvel, uh, you know, this guy... Um, What's his name? Uh, uh, Venom. He was like this. <laughs> that, that is not how steroids work, man. That is not how steroids work. Um, I don't want, you know, obviously for YouTube's terms and conditions, I don't want to start preaching to you about steroids, but I've taken steroids. I know what steroids. It's like taking, for example, you take a tetanus shot or you take a, a B complex uh, injection, you don't feel anything much. It it goes to your muscle. Either it's tissue, you know, for muscle tissue, you inject, fine. So after you take it, it's you go about your normal day. The only difference that you find is when you go for a workout and when you're working out, there is where you feel the difference, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Okay, I don't encourage this by any means. Please don't uh, say that, oh, I watched Roy's video. He said it's a magical feeling. Remember the health issues that I'm facing today, the very fact that, you know, I posted the videos that I'm dying is because of steroids. Steroids have um, the immediate benefits are visible, but the dangerous side effects are not visible and they are permanent. So I don't endorse taking steroids, especially for youngsters. All right. So uh, Dave Batista to maintain his physique, especially to repair especially to repair, especially the bumps and bruises that Dave Batista has taken over the years of being a wrestler, being a heavy guy. Remember, if you're a light guy, you can jump and flip and all. That's why if you see break dancers, they are all very thin, thin and light. Even Muay Thai fighters, thin and light. But the minute you start becoming heavy and big, like the world's strongest man, if you jump, you can literally break your bone. Uh, this is a very graphic video. If you're going to search in on YouTube, type, uh, Psycho Sid, who passed away lately, was a WWE superstar. Uh, Psycho Sid or Sid Justice, as he was called. He jumps from the top rope in wrestling and he lands on his leg. 
okay and below the knee his leg snaps into two it's a very graphic uh, video so the more heavy you are the more pressure it's pu it puts on your heart or your breathing on on your intestine on all parts of your body okay mm. so now one second i got this message from this business guy uh he's sending me a lot of uh, um i'm uh, and phone. Just give me one second. Huh? This is a business client of mine. Um, okay. <coughs> Sorry about it. Okay. So, what I was telling you was, um, the more heavy your body is, uh, in fact, there is a documentary of World's Strongest Man. You can search this one, Eddie Hall. Eddie Hall is one of those athletes who... Uh, take part in the world's strongest man. They literally, uh, literally have to eat like 64 eggs and uh, 10 pieces of chicken and whole day you have to keep eating, eating, eating. You cannot stop eating. Eating is a job. It's not fun. And uh, you can imagine like the, their stomachs are so big. They're, <sighs> they're actually struggling to breathe. Why? Because to maintain so much muscle. So Dave Batista, when he started off his career, uh, early on uh, he wanted to be this wrestler but his unique selling proposition was this this big huge monster he was uh, he had some name uh, i can't remember that uh, like um, some uh, uh, more like uh, the behemoth or something like that okay early uh, let me see if i can get his name uh, uh, the first the first character that he uh, undertook. Anyway, it was more like a, uh, like he was some kind of uh, mutant. Okay, so what happened is that was his unique selling proposition. And if you Google search Dave Batista in the younger days, he was big man. He was muscles were popping out, and he had this hyper energy where you take the ropes and shake it like this. And so he he was. A huge guy, massive, a very scary looking guy. Okay. But this was during his wrestling days. Now, you know, when you're in your 20s, you feel invincible. When you're in your 30s, you feel you can conquer the world. But as you start getting older, your physical body you know, doesn't remain the same. There's a lot of wear and tear on your joints. Um, you even get breathing problems. Your heart Obviously, it's like having an engine. When you buy a brand new, let's say, car, it's everything is pick and span is new. But if you keep accelerating and you keep using this brand new car after one year by, you know, using it like crazy, of course, there is wear and tear in the engine parts and all that. And as you keep replacing the parts, it's no longer the same car it used to be. Okay. So for uh, someone like Dave Batista. I think once he crossed a certain milestone, he knew it was time to retire. Like all these uh, wrestlers, Undertaker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold Steve Austin, <coughs> injuries build up. Some may admit, some may not admit. And especially if you check like Triple H, he literally had a heart attack where he was going to die. Undertaker, his documentary, so many injuries. Oh my goodness, it's unbelievable how uh, he was even surviving in the ring. And you, we know the most famous one, Stone Cold Steve Austin, where his uh, Owen Hart, the late Owen Hart, gave him a pile driver. That is, you know, uh, a finishing move where you put the guy upside down and you bounce him. You're supposed to protect the guy, but he hit his head and the whole compression of his weight and the other body weight crushed his spine. Okay, so <coughs> he had to retire. Triple, uh, if you see Shawn Michaels, one of the most handsome, charismatic uh, guys in the early 80s. He was so handsome, but today if you see his face, his eye socket has, uh, you know, that muscle has detached. That's why he looks like he has a lazy eye. His eyes are squinty. So <coughs> the physical body cannot take it anymore. So Dave Batista saw the writing on the wall and he was very proactive and just like The Rock who knew that I want to move from wrestling, I don't want to keep bouncing around in the ring, he moved and he moved into Hollywood and became the most successful Hollywood superstar. Uh, John Cena is also doing the same. Dave Batista was after uh, The Rock, 
he also wanted to carve a niche in Hollywood. Now, Hollywood is a different beast altogether. Uh, there's a lot of ass kissing. There is a lot of uh, uh, rubbing shoulders. There's a lot of PR involved. The, I know this because I have clients and customers who are uh, in the media, okay, from females to males. And I'll tell you, it's a very, very competitive, very dirty industry, okay? Uh, forget the casting couch, okay, that you have to offer sex in order to get roles. Um, the very fact that if you have to go for an audition, okay, let's say, for example, uh, for those of you who know or do not know this, let's say there's a new movie. They will not tell you the actual name. If, even if it's Star Wars, they'll not say it's Star Wars. They'll say it is Intergalactic uh, uh, Lovers Project, okay, or they will say it's a Rose and Thorns Project. So they'll say we have this project, we have a character who we want to see if you fit the bill. They'll give you the characteristics. He has to be strong leadership. He has to be uh, very rude. He has to be uh, very focused. He has to have a commanding presence. So they'll give you a list of traits. You'll read those traits. Okay. And they'll give you the script. And there, there'll be 10 people sitting around and they'll say, okay, deliver these lines. So you do not know what it is. Maybe it could even be the Batman movie. But you do not know. You're just given the character. Like for the Batman auditioning, they didn't tell uh, certain people that you're auditioning for Batman. What they said is, we want you to uh, play the act of a vigilante who wants justice. You're hurt and you're uh, depressed. Deep down, you're carrying a lot of baggage, but you are cold, calculative, and you're focused, and you don't give a damn, and you have a deep bass voice. So... If someone had told you Batman, obviously you would, oh, I, I need to prepare like Batman. But if you don't have those characteristics, you are just going to follow what is told to you. That is the same uh, auditioning process for even Star Wars. One of my clients actually had to audition for an extra for Star Wars. But now here's the tough part. After they tell you the character, after they tell you everything, the dialogues and your deliver, <coughs> only if you hit the nail on the head. Only if the director feels you're right for the job, he gives you the role or he tells you what it is. But if he feels something is slightly off, they just communicate to the manager, the actor's manager. I'm sorry, he didn't get the part. They will never give you the feedback. Oh, you did this little bit more. Oh, your accent was out of tune. Oh, you were too soft with this delivery line. So <coughs> in the movie acting industry, all these variables take place. Then obviously it is, do you know Godfather? Do you know whom to approach to get the role? Do you know, uh, are you marketable? Like if they take your name, do people come running? Why do you think uh, in um, CM Punk, a wrestler who tried his luck with the UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship, he, um, his first fight, he was paid up to a million dollars. Normally in UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship, your first fight, you're paid maybe a thousand dollars, but he was paid a million. Why? Because he was bankable. His name brought in eyeballs. So they would definitely give you a movie role if your name can sell tickets, if your name can fill the cinema hall. That is why even till today, we have Sylvester Stallone, we have Arnold Schwarzenegger. They are 70, 80 years old. Why do you think they still get lead roles? Because there's still that sense of nostalgia. Okay, but now <coughs> coming to why did Dave Batista lose so much weight? One is he obviously knew that his age was catching up. And remember, when you don't act to age appropriate roles, we as the audience, we feel it very funny. I'll give a simple example. Let's say, for example, Shah Rukh Khan, who is a very famous Indian actor. That is, if you're not Indian, you don't know Shah Rukh Khan, which, I'm, which I will be surprised. Now, Shah Rukh Khan, Kamal Asan, Rajni Kant. Uh, Shah Rukh Khan is, I think, 55 plus or something. Then uh, Rajni Kant is though 70, 75 or whatever. And then you have, uh, um, uh, you know, I give another name, Shah Rukh Khan, Rajni Kant, uh, whatever. Okay. These actors, these actors are way beyond their prime. So, you know, the funny thing about Rajni Kant is, even though he's like, 
a uh, almost 70 80 wait i'll give you his exact age uh, raj ni ah uh, here it is rajnikanth even though he is uh, what is his age 73 years old they give him a wig they make sure there is heavy cgi where he is made to look like a uh 20 or 30 year old even kamalasan yeah i give you the name kamalasan that guy also is what is his age let me give you he is also i think in his 70s or 80s well, he is 67 69 years old so when they give them roles where they are supposed to be young we like to suspend disbelief but deep down we know he is a grandfather but he is trying to act 30 years old so <coughs> it sometimes it does backfire people are like come on man you are a grandfather what are you trying to act like a 30 year old and especially sharukh khan uh he gets very criticized for taking on roles where he is imagine he is 58 or 55 or whatever sharukh khan let me give you his exact age sharukh khan okay he is 58 years old going to be 60 he takes on a college like he is a college student for example everyone like come on man you are acting with uh, females who are old enough to be your daughter so we find it very funny okay even even though we are big fans of them so even dave batista knows for a fact that he can with his wrinkles and everything else his big body he can only do so much because keep this much in mind especially if you do not know about steroids after a certain point um you have to keep increasing the dosage higher and higher and higher and higher to maintain that is why the rock is a very rare exception um how long will he keep injecting himself to maintain that size even one guy mike o'hern he is 55 plus they are massive huge but to maintain that you need to have a doctor you need to have high quality uh, pharma grade steroids and uh, hormones and you know eventually you don't know when the body will just break it can't take that is why so many bodybuilders are dying due to heart attack that is why so many uh young bodybuilders in their 30s they are just dying the body can't handle it so due to health reasons this is my assumption one is due to his age due to the fact that he can't carry so much weight due to the fact that um it's not worth for him to be so big he has <coughs> decided to follow where is a trend where is the demand and that is why if you see that photograph of his before he was muscular but now he has this gucci black uh, suit and black shirt and he has this pearly kind of necklace i'm sure he has his pr and his marketing team telling him this is how you need to look very vogue and all that and he has his glasses and he has this white beard so it is a manufactured image obviously he'll have a personal branding team to tell tell him look like this this will sell well so he is trying to act and be his age so what i feel is he is very smart he is very intelligent he knows what he is doing and he is trying to make sure that um the last few days of his life where he is relevant you know because remember you'll only get roles as long as you are relevant uh once the demand goes like the rock now people are kind of fed up of his same roles and same alpha state that is why do you think black adams was such a big flop because he thought the character the rock is greater than even the marvel or dc universe uh, he looks the same everywhere in jumanji he looks the same in black adams he looks the same in uh, a detective movie he looks the same in a comedy movie he is his face is more like a he, he for lack of a better word he looks like a you know appendage he looks like a dick head you know actually like a dick. he looks like that so <laughs> anyway i know if you're a if you're a big fan of his you wouldn't like what i said but <sighs> there's only so much man uh, you at some point you can't reinvent yourself so dave batista is going through his last hura and what he wants to do is make sure that he maximizes on what the audience wants on where the demand is and i'm pretty sure he might bulk up but there's very limited how much he can keep going up and down and uh, eventually eventually as time goes by as age catches up he will also go into irrelevancy but if he tries to maintain the same size remember um uh, what's his name 
Arnold Schwarzenegger had multiple heart surgeries, multiple, where he has to literally has had to change his diet. Even Sylvester Stallone, I think, has had health scares, but he is very private about it. And uh, Bruce Wills, we also saw no, what happened to him. He is dying due to, I think, dementia or whatever. So <laughs> for me, what Dave Batista is doing is being smart about his health, being smart about longevity, is definitely changing his diet and he is definitely acting his age with roles that are appropriate for him. Like the best example I can give is Amitabh Bachchan, who today and his age is 90, I think. Amitabh Bachchan, let me give his age. Amitabh Bachchan, what is his age? 90, 81. Uh, he's acting his roles. He's no longer acting like a hero. He's acting more like a mature, old, wise old man. So I think what Dave Batista is doing the same. And um, he is trying to extend his validity or his demand for as long as it takes. And uh, for us, we feel it is strange because we're used to seeing him so big. But remember, there's only so much you can do. And if you still don't buy into what I'm trying to say, watch the last few matches of The Undertaker. Watch the Brothers of Destruction, that is Undertaker and uh, Kane, versus Triple H versus Shawn Michaels as a tag team in Saudi. One of the worst matches. And the worst of the worst was the dream match, Goldberg versus Undertaker. They completely messed it up. Why? Because age. And if you know this, uh, another uh, wrestler, his name is Sting, who is a legend, who is a legend. He tried to make a comeback at the age of 50 plus. He just got hit on the ropes and he uh, completely damaged his lower back. So age, age is big, you know, uh, a factor that will make you very humble. And it has even happened to me. <laughs> You don't remain young forever. So anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Love to hear what you have to say. And uh, for me, I just feel Dave Batista is doing what it takes to be relevant. And he's milking it for all it's worth, which any sensible person would have done. So what do you think of Dave Batista's transformation? Do you like it? Don't like it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And this is me signing off.